Hey everybody, it's Brooke. I'm back with making something purple. Another something, well, this is the same one I've been working on, but it is part of the let's make some purple stuff. This is Alfred the Bird by Lisa Maddock. And this is a slow stitch cover for a purple journal. If you want to see what I'm going to do next, stick around and we'll get to stitching. <music> All right, so I have done some stitching. I've layered up the back. I've done a bunch of seed stitch inside this little doily. I've uh, pinned down one of our hexes. I apologize for this bright light on this side, but I really have to have pretty direct light to stitch. <laughs> so we've got one of our hex hexes and a little yo-yo, little cluster that we're gonna stitch down there. I stitched some of the hexes up here uh, in this fabric down here, I went over some of the pattern. Can you see that? I think you can. Made little lazy daisy stitches, just echoing the pattern of the fabric underneath. Uh, layered a bunch of the different fabrics. I think I'm going to do some thread painting on that flower. And then on the front, because this is going to be the spine. So this will be the front cover. We've got our Alfred the Bird looking all cute. And yo-yos, a little sequiny butterfly, this beautiful net lace, um, another yo-yo down here, just a little cluster of things, and part of a sal uh, salvage edge that says, do I say salvage? Salvage edge that says the earth laughs and flowers by Emerson. So I just think he's coming along beautifully. I did do a little running stitch all the way around Alfred, drew in his eye, and so I thought we would stitch his eye and I did some turkey work at Johnny's Friday Night Live in her attic, attic, um, over on the Junk Journal shop, which you probably can see on her channel. But I just did a little bit of random stitching there, and I did the turkey work inside our yo-yo. And I had someone message me, so I will show how I did that. Um, but I thought we'd just do a little bit more stitching and get this guy done. Don't know if we'll finish it on the video, but let's give him an eye and some legs, first of all. I just have some DMC black um, 310 stranded embroidery floss. Spit it out. Uh, and here's a fun little trick for you, if you didn't know it. If you pull the end of the thread where the number is, this end will pull out without tangling. If you pull it from the other end, it makes a big giant mess. Cool, huh? A fun tip. A fun fact. So I just got a little bit of that, I'll give it a clip, and I think I'm going to use two strands for Alfred's eye and his legs. Let's see if we can get those separated. Boy, I need to cut my nails. Nails need to be trimmed back for sure. Nope, don't want three strands, want two strands. The struggle is real. Well, we'll do, th oh wait, there we go. We got it. We got it. Okay. So we have our two strands. Got my needle. Let's see if I can thread it. Can she get it in one? Wouldn't that be exciting? And I think I'll do... Um, will we do a French knot for his eye? And then a running stitch around it. Or an outline stitch, rather. That sounds like it might make sense. Let's go ahead and put a little knot at the end there. I think that might work. Ouch. Already stabbed myself. Okay. So let's do a French knot for his pupil. I zoomed way in so you guys could see. Let me make sure I'm still... Oh, I'm still in frame. And I use my friction pen to draw his eyeball in. So let's do kind of a big French knot. We'll wrap it several times. We don't want him to be a beady-eyed bird. Okay, and just hold that and pull that knot through. Nice, that's a good size knot. And then we'll just use that same thread and outline it. Ooh, that's a lot of layers, I'm trying to get the thread in the right place. 
a lot of layers of fabric right there. And I do have batting on the back. You can see all my messy stitching. but So it's got a nice fluffy um, background. So the journal cover will be nice and soft. And we'll just do some tiny little outline stitches. Again, trying to not make a beady eye. Trying to keep those stitches the same length. The fabric is, there are too many layers of fabric for me to do more than one stitch at a time, so I'm sort of stabbing it just to get through. I think there are about five layers of fabric right there. And because it's a curve, I'm making very small stitches. And we'll just back stitch all the way around there. Now I can just use my iron or my heat gun when I'm done and get rid of that pen mark. He kind of looks like he has um, bloodshot eyes right now because the pen I used with hot pink. Alfred looks like he's kind of tired, but that will disappear. Most of it's under my stitches, uh, but we could just shoot it with the heat tool when we're done. I did a lot of this off camera because it's kind of boring. I mean, it's just, you know, a lot of running stitch. Nothing you guys don't know how to do. Oop, that stitch kind of went off. It went off course. I don't know what I did. But let's fix that while we have the chance. Threading the needle again. Oh, goody. I live for that. Two strands, and this is a fairly big eye. It's not too bad. Whoop. Except when your dry skin pulls it back out. Darn it. Oh, now I've got it all uneven. Well, for Pete's sake. Just go ahead and trim that. Get those ends even. There we go. Let's see if we can get that stitch in the right place this time. Not have to keep re-threading the needle. I'm just gonna move over a little so I get into that light. I wasn't kidding, I need that light. The old eyes aren't what they used to be. So I think this is so cute. The pattern, um, Lisa Maddox pattern for all the Alfred birds will be linked down below. She has a um, quilt pattern where there, I think there are 12 blocks that have variations of Alfred the bird and it's just adorable. I am not a quilter, but were I one, I might make that quilt because the book comes with all kinds of, well, it's a PDF, comes with all different bodies and wings and tails so that you can put together all different kinds of Alfreds and I just think they're adorable. That last stitch in there. Ooh, really thick fabric right there. Bunches of fabric. Cute. It's not that often. I'll bring that up so you guys can see his little eyeball. he looks suspicious? I think he looks cute. I'm pretty sure. So see, he already has a whole lot more personality with his little eye. And I've got black thread wrapped around everything now. Whoopsie. 
That's not cool. Stuck on a pin. Right, you get up there. All right, so I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and draw in some feet, or some legs. For Alfred, I want him to be standing down here. It's gonna be a little tricky over the waist, but I bet we can get it. At least an idea. Do we just want little toes on him? That'll work, right? I think so. Because then he can be standing down there and we'll do some grass and stuff around him. Kind of bring it over here into this piece. So he has something to stand on. I guess we'll need a knot. That probably will work better. I think I'll start down here on his little toes. And again, I'm just doing some back stitching. So coming in, making his little toes, joining them there. You guys see? I don't, hopefully, I haven't been holding it so you can't see anything. I'm trying to make those about the same size. And then following that line that we drew for his little skinny birdie leg. Going forward a little bit, or up a little bit. and then coming back down in that same hole that we came out of will give us a nice back stitch. Great for a straight line. I'm trying to keep the stitches about the same length. I'm just making sure that they are joined together so it doesn't look uh, choppy. So if you go, if you don't quite make that same hole, if you go a little bit uh, beyond it, you'll get these little breaks in your stitches so it looks kind of um, broken up. Uh, yeah, little breaks in your stitches. Mm -hmm. I think for the flower stems, I might couch down. I have this beautiful... Um, DMC that's satiny and it's just gorgeous but it's a nightmare to stitch with because it's so slippery so I'm thinking maybe I'll couch pieces of that down to get the shine I'll show it to you in just a second I think one more will do it and Alfred has a leg Awesome. There, he's coming to life. All right, let me show you that thread. It's really pretty. It's also a big tangly mess. Isn't that pretty? I don't know what it's called. It's just rayon floss uh, and it's six strands as well but see can you see the difference between like the black how matte the black is you hold it under there and how shiny the rayon is so I was thinking that might be pretty to couch down as uh, some flower stems that's what I was thinking and I think I will just leave that I'll come back and do that later you get the idea of the back stitch So I've got a little flower bead here, and I was thinking about putting it in the center of that yo-yo. I think I like that. So I did, actually my daughter threaded a beading needle for me because woof, that's, that's tough, tough business. So let's see if we can get up through 
on that fabric without bending the needle too badly. There we go. Just put in a couple stitches to make sure that knot doesn't come through. So I'm going right into the center of the yo-yo, putting in a few little stitches just to anchor the thread. The um, beading thread is so fine that there is a possibility that the knot would just pop right through that fabric and then in anything on the thread obviously would be lost. So that'll help. And we'll put, oh, I thought there was a hole through the center. There is not. All right, then I didn't need our beading needle because it's a little shank on the back. All right, then. Well, that will just sit right in there beautifully. Pull that in, get it nice and snug. Getting another stitch in there is going to be tricky, isn't it? So I just pulled it up a little bit, going back through that shank, because I could come down a little bit. Boy, is that light really messing up everything, you guys? I hope you can see. And I guess if you can't, then you won't know, because I won't put the video up. Go back down through, tighten that up. Look at that. That's in there nice and snug. I was planning on putting a seed bead on top to hold it because I thought the hole went right through the center of the bead. So we'll just knot this off. And then we don't have a naked yo-yo. I think the last one I will fill with little beads. You could do French knots. You could do some pistol stitches out of it. There are all, things, all sorts of things you can do with a yo-yo. All right. So we've got our little flower bead secured. I guess technically it was more of a button, wasn't it? I like that. The color was just perfect. Pretty, and an extra, another texture, which is nice. Um, let's see, maybe we should do some couching. And then I'll show you guys the uh, turkey work. Yep, that'll work. Oh, the rent a doggy's going nuts. I'm sorry if you can hear that. Who knows what's happening out there? It could be anything. So we'll need a little bit of a bigger needle. Let's find a nice sharp one. This ought to do it. These have been out of the package for so long, I can't begin to tell you what they are. This is a cruel embroidery needle, I believe. Could not begin to tell you what size, I'm sorry. It's got a pointy end and a big eye. It doesn't want to stay together to thread. Yeah, I think the sheen of this is going to be just beautiful. So I will give it a knot, and it doesn't like to stay together. It's not particularly fond of staying all together. I suppose I could condition it, but I don't think it matters because we're going to couch over it. Give that a little bit of a trim. Okay, so I think we'll do one stem coming up here there we go oops it's pulling our lace a little bit I'm gonna give that a little trim oh 
glad I didn't just cut that green thread. Wouldn't that have been a corker? And I think we want that to come down to right where this flower is. Is that straight? That's pretty straight. And I'm just going to go back to the other side. Okay, so that's a big long stitch and we don't want to have that just floating around in space. Don't want to pull it too tight. Now I'm going to take some of the just regular, actually, you know what? I don't want to use the cream. I want some green. Here we go. We use some green embroidery floss. Get a little bit of that. one strand out because that's all I want and we're just going to go over to hold that slippery thread in place so I've just got one strand and we'll go back to our little needle maybe Off we go. Get that needle out of there because I'll end up stabbing myself. And I'm going to come up right where I came up with the green, right next to that slippery green thread. It's kind of hard to see with all the stuff going on right there, but once we get out of the lace, it'll be easier to see. Coming up right next to it. And I'm just going to go over it to hold it down, just giving that rayon thread a little hug with the um, regular embroidery floss. Come down a little further and do the same thing. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change the angle on this. It'll be easier if we do it sideways. If going right to left will be easier. Got all these threads hanging off the back. <laughs> okay. There we go. So come up underneath. Make sure I'm still in frame. I hope you can see. My camera doesn't do real up close very well. Okay, do that. And just do a tiny stitch right over that rayon, giving it a hug on the other side. Go down about the same distance. And go over that rayon. Pull the thread so that it's tight, but not so tight that it's going to warp the fabric. Pull that through. on the other side, go down about the same amount, come out on the bottom, go on the other side of the rayon, come out on the top, scoot along on the back, and come out underneath. Couching is awesome. You can use so many different fibers that you wouldn't be able to sew with. Um, <clears throat> you can get really smooth curves. Writing is awesome. Using couching, um, just any, you know, stems, flowers, just making random lines. And it's easy. Go down a little bit, come out underneath. You could do a separate, a different color if you wanted the little stripes to stand out more where you've couched it down. And underneath, 
go back in on the top. You can do it as a stab stitch or you can do it all in one motion. Whatever is more comfortable. Ouch, speaking of stabbing, again with that. And go in above it. Come down a little ways on the back and come out down below. Let me bring that up so you guys can see. You can hardly even see those little stitches. Little tiny stitches. And that's looking pretty good, although it would appear that our rayon thread, I've gone a little crooked, so that's going to need to come out. So let's try it this way again. Leave that on the top. And we'll wait until we're down at the bottom before we take it through the fabric. Because I thought I could get it straight, but heck no. Why would I think that? That's crazy. So we'll just get one last little stitch in down at the bottom where that other flower is starting. I might try to do some grass with the rayon, just some little straight stitches. I don't know if I'll be able to because it does have a crazy mind of its own, but we will see. Pull that nice and firm, bring this around to the back, get Alfred's leg thread out of the way. Oh, we caught it. Oh dear. Oh well, I'll deal with that later. You guys don't need to watch me mess with that. Make sure that's pulled firmly. Let's just knot that off. Then we'll grab that rayon and bring it around to the back again. There we go. Sorry if I put my big head in the camera. Gotta lick it, you know, to get it all flattened out. You know what, let's use our needle threader. Let's just cut to the chase, shall we? These are great if you don't have one. I've just got mine tied onto my needle book, um, but it has two different size hooks, one on either end, and all you have to do is slip your needle through, or slip the hook through your needle Grab your thread, put it in the hook. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? And then pull that right through the eye of your needle. This one's kind of thick, but there we go. Look at that thread carrying on. Eek. Get that out of the way. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, man. I don't even know what happened there. Something wretched. Okay, that's not best at all. Mm. Okay, let's just do this. We'll cut it off right there. See, this has turned into a tangly mess because that is the nature of this thread. Wow, it's never done that before. That was a new one. Guess we'll skip the needle threader. Let's try that again. Yep, don't know if I'll be doing grass with this thread. <laughs> don't know if I want to engage. It would look awful pretty, but... Try it again. Nope. Gotta get this back through the fabric. Eh. Does not want to cooperate, even with that great big eye. Nope. 
No can do. All right, we'll try the needle printer again. I'm sorry, you guys. You must be yelling at the screen. Brooke, just do it. Just do it. I know, right? I'm yelling at myself on the inside. <laughs> Once again, things that are so easy to do. Turn on the camera and yikes. There we go. Okay, so unhappy. Everyone's happy except for that one thread. There we go. Good grief. Okay, you get out of the way. I don't want to catch you by mistake. There we go. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Get you down where you belong. All that for that one little stitch. Okay, we'll take it to the back and we'll give this a knot and say goodbye to the rayon thread. Try to anyway. Just doing some stitches to secure it. All right, that ought to be good. Don't think that's going anywhere. And let's have a look. Oh, look, pretty. And that, see, I just went in right down at the very bottom. And that's all couched down, good and secure. Awesome. So we have one of our stems. And then I cut these little leaves out of wool. This is felted wool. I was thinking they could go in there also. And I'll just do a couple running stitches through them. You can see they're extremely free form. And all I did was take the little piece of wool, some small scissors, Cut a little rectangle. And then go from one point up to the other one. Go to the other side, whoops. And that's kind of a skinny little leaf, but you have a cute little leaf. You can hold that up to the fabric to use it as a template. You can make a template, whatever. But you know me, I like free form and willy nilly. It's my favorite. So there's that. Um, hmm. Just thinking, thinking really hard. I think that'll be really cute. And then we'll do some flowers and, and grass and stuff down there. Might do some more flowers coming up behind Alfred on that side, like stitched flowers. Not sure. And what else? Oh, you know what? I have this beautiful um, variegated pearl cotton in all these greens. I could use that as the grass. Oh, good. That way I don't have to use the terrifying rayon again because that was, I don't know. might use it for another stem, but I'm not sure. Do we want to do another stem there? I won't make you guys watch. It'll be exactly the same thing. <laughs> Let me show you the turkey works, what I forget. I've got a little scrap over here. Just cut a piece off so we're not dealing with a whole bunch of stuff. And this is just some um, I don't know, random linen. I use it a lot for a neutral. And I need an off-white, and it just happens to be sitting here. Let's see if we can get that torn. Okay. There's that. And let's see. What should we use? I used wool for this. I guess we could use that. Well, you know what? Let's use embroidery floss. It's a little easier. Just for demonstration purposes. Get some of this. Come on, Tim Holtz scissors. You're not supposed to be that way. And I think I'll use our big needle again. Make sure it's sharp enough. Yeah, it's all right. I use all six strands. I 
So if you were going to do the inside of a um, yo-yo, you would have the little opening, say that big. And we can just make a knot. How are we doing for time? Oh, we've been going a while. I'll show you this and then maybe I will go off and do some more fighting with the um, rayon thread. So you just start wherever. I find it easier just to go around the outside perimeter first and just come up, touch a knot on the back, and make a loop. So I'm not going in the same hole. I'm going over a little bit and figure out how high you want your loop, however tall you want your fuzz. Um, you can cut it back. And then you're just gonna make another stitch, they call it a locking stitch, right near it. Okay, so you'll come, oh, this fabric is very soft. Come back through and just make a little stitch. Doesn't matter, totally random, can go any direction you want. Give that a pull. Didn't really lock it very well. Let's do another one. Go next to that one. Okay, now give that a pull. That's not going anywhere. Do another loop. That one's a little taller than the other one. Go in next to it. Make your little locking stitch. Give it a pull. Nothing's moving. That's what you want. And you can do this total. I mean, you could come over here and do it. It can be completely random. It doesn't have to be right next to each other. You can go back and forth, whatever you want to do. I'll come back and um, I'll do one here just so you can see I ain't, I'm not lying, you really can. I usually leave mine a little bit longer than I'm going to want just because you can't add more. I mean, you can cut it back, but adding it, nope, not so much. So there's that. I'll come back over here and you just keep going filling it in with loops which I think I will do um, I'll speed it up or I'll cut this part out because well it's a little loop that's too little a loop pull that back up a little bit and a locking stitch and that's all you do. You just keep going, keep going, keep going until the whole area is full of loops. Okay, so I will uh, speed it up or cut this part out and I'll be back when I get this filled in. Okay, you guys, we're back. Fast forward six hours that it took me to do this. I don't know what I was thinking making that circle so big. Um, good thing that I'm cutting that out for you because, well, you'd be bored. So I'm just doing my very last stitch. I could probably squeeze some more loops in there, but uh, I think that we've got the general idea. I did switch to a variegated purple because I thought that might be fun to have all those different colors in there. You could certainly use more than one thread. Get that last loop. The last loops in the center get a little fiddly, but it's not too bad. Get that last loop in there. Get our last locking stitch without grabbing anything, hopefully. That last little locking stitch. Oops, did we grab the knot? Yep, but that's okay. It'll be all right. Grab some stitches there. Stop that. Try to untangle it. There we go. Pretty full of loops in there it is. But 
go of that, you. There we go. All right, so we got that last locking stitch in there. And we'll go ahead and tie this off. I did catch a knot, but that's okay. It's on the back. No biggie. It will not matter. Let's go ahead and cut that. Okay, so we have all of our loops on the front. Kind of, oh, I did catch it. You can see right there, but that's okay. We'll fluff it up and you'll be able to tell. So there are all of our loops in a little circle. It actually looks kind of fun just like that, just having, you could make the loops kind of shorter and just do all the loops and leave them because that's kind of fun. But then you go in with your scissors and cut your loops. Or not. As I said, that was kind of cute. This all cut. And then we give it a haircut to the length we want. Did we get them all? I think we did. I kind of like to pull the fabric back and pull these guys all up to check their length. Looks like we missed a few loops, but it's all right. We'll get them. Okay, that's all the loops, I think. And then you just go in and give it a trim. I should probably uh, move this, huh? We'll end up with purple fuzz everywhere. And just give it a little trim to whatever length you would like your fluff to be. It's almost like a little pom-pom. My Tim Holtz scissors don't seem to be that sharp. Let's graduate to the next size. You can do a little shorter on the outside. And fluff them up. Check See if you like how it looks. Oop, an escaped loop. And I would take certainly more time to kind of shape this up, but you get the idea. You lay it down flat. And they do make a little brush that's like a tiny little dog brush with wires. And you can use that to go in and fluff up all those fibers. Or you can just take a needle and mess with it for a while to get everything separated and fluffy. It does look cute with all the variegated, doesn't it? I like that. So I think you get the idea and you can make it come out of a yo-yo. You could I've seen people doing dandelions with yellow uh, turkey work now that look so cute. Just like a dandelion with you know a little green um, what is that piece called? Calyx I guess underneath the flower. They look awesome. So all, thing, all kinds of fun that you can have with a turkey stitch, uh, turkey work, whatever you want to call it. And going back to this piece, where is it? There we go. There's some done in wool on Alfred the Bird. So that is that for today, guys. I'm going to go off and do some more stitching. And I'll probably do one more video of stitching before we get to actually covering the journal and putting the pages in. So I want to thank you so much for coming to hang out and see some stitching and let me know what you're working on on your work table and I will talk to you guys really soon. Have a wonderful weekend and if you haven't subscribed already, I hope you'll think about it. Okay everybody, bye.